Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please let's open our Bibles again to the book of Psalm 105. Psalm 105. That is where we started this um, teaching about uh, the anointed and the anointing. We, uh, we began to understand what it means to be anointed and what is the anointing. Because many people do not have understanding of these two terminologies, um, especially in the Pentecostal and charismatic, uh, um, you know, parlance. We say the anointed. This person is, an, is anointed, or this person carries an anointing. We hear things like that. Some of us we even sing that song, anointing falls on me, and so on and so forth. You know. We, we want to understand what we are saying. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Psalm 105, we are looking at verse 15. He says, saying, touch not my anointed ones, do my prophets no harm. And I said, to understand this particular statement in the book of Psalms, we need to read it in context. And we did that last week. We read it in context and we understood from verse 1 to verse 15. We read it in context. We read the verses before it, the first 14 verses. And we saw that when he said, touch not my anointed ones, he was not talking about pastors and prophets. He was not talking about man of God, like some people make us to believe. Amen. No, actually, he was talking about some peasants. Some <laughs> peasants, actually. They were peasants. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they were common people. Amen? In fact, they were just uh, shepherds. They were businessmen. Hallelujah. I'm sure you know that Abraham was not a pastor. You know? Was not a man of God, so to say. Amen? You know, in the language we know today, man of God in the way we call it today. Amen? He was not leading any church or any congregation. He was just uh, leading his family. Amen? Hallelujah. But he was simply somebody who had the gospel and believed it. The Bible says Abraham believed God. He believed God. It was credited to him as what? Righteousness. So Abraham believed God. His faith in God was what made him to become anointed. Amen. Hallelujah. So Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were men who believed in God. These were the people that the psalmist referred to here as the anointed ones of God. He said, the Lord protected them. He rebuked kings for their sake. He will not allow anyone to insult them or to assault them. He even rebuking, saying, touch not my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Amen. Hallelujah. These were people who believed, people who have received the gift of righteousness, the righteousness of God through faith in the gospel. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, so we understood also last week that the word anointed does not have anything to do with oil. Like this, that is oil being poured on somebody's head. Like some people will go to a seminary, a theological seminary, or some Bible school, and then when they graduate, they put this thing, clerical thing in their, on, you know, in, on their neck. They are wearing that thing with suit. Then they all kneel down, and then one big man of God will bring the oil, whether in a nice bowl or as they do today. You know, today the drama is more now. They're so putting a very fine horn. <laughs> Maybe sometimes a, a golden horn or a, a ram's horn. Now pour the oil there. Amen. You see, the drama is much. Amen. So now, from that day now, they now say, you are now what? Anointed man of God. They say, he be a anointed man of God. Well, really... If you look at the Bible, which is our the, the book that defines our faith, that defines our faith and the practice of our faith, you see that it has nothing to do with oil. Amen. 
We saw the example of Cyrus, a Gentile king, who did not even know God. God said, you don't know me. And yet God said, God says the Lord to is anointed. So God called Cyrus. <laughs> Somebody was an unbeliever. God called him my anointed. That's Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1. Do you remember? God said, my anointed. So, did anybody pour oil on him? No. Did anybody pour oil on Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? No. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And of course, Jesus Christ, our Lord himself. The Bible says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Nobody anointed him with oil. Did anybody anoint him with oil? No. 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 Praise the Lord. He said, said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. When he said he has anointed me, what are you talking about, oil? Amen. And then another point we got last week is that God himself is the one who anoints. No man anoints. No man is authorized to anoint any man. No man. God is the only one who anoints. Amen. Amen. God was the one who anointed Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was the one who anointed Jesus. How God anointed. How God anointed Jesus. It was God who anointed even Cyrus. He said, God says the Lord, to is anointed. So, the anointed is one that God himself has chosen. So, to be anointed actually means to be chosen by God. To be what? To be chosen, appointed by God for a specific purpose. To be consecrated by God, chosen, appointed by God Himself for a purpose. Which he alone determines. Hallelujah. But we also saw that in the Bible, God commanded Moses to, uh, you know, make uh, what we call the holy anointing oil. Is that not so? We saw that in Exodus chapter 30. Is that not so? And um, we saw the ingredients. That went into what they call what is called the holy anointing oil. Is that not so? So, the holy anointing oil. Can you find it in the chemical stores? Do you have it here? If you can't have it here, and there was even a, an embargo laid or placed on producing it or mass producing it. You cannot mass produce it. You cannot go and produce it in your own house. God said anybody who did that among the children of Israel should be what? Cut off. Excommunicated. In fact, if they catch you with it, they will stone you to death. Hallelujah. So it was one. So in the whole land of Israel, it was one. And he stayed with the prophet. Amen. So he stayed with Moses as a prophet. So Moses was the one who was authorized by God. Pay attention. To anoint certain individuals. And the person that Moses anointed with that oil, pay attention, with that oil was who? Aaron. He anointed him as what? High priest. To serve in the office of the priest or the high priest in ministering on the behalf of the children of Israel to the Lord. Amen. Because if we go to the book of Exodus, let's go back there. Exodus chapter 28. Exodus chapter 28. Exodus 28. I'm reading verse 40 to 41. Exodus chapter 28, verses 40 and 41 says, For Aaron's sons, you shall make coats and searches and caps. You shall make them for glory and beauty. And you shall put them on Aaron, your brother, and on his sons with him, and you shall anoint them and ordain them 
and consecrate them that they may serve me as priests. Exodus chapter 28, verse 40 and 41. So God specifically instructed. So it's not that Moses just decided and said, I'm going to anoint Aaron. No, it was God who gave him that instruction. You anoint this person to become this, that is to be this. Do you see that? So, and that anointing was to publicly, pay attention, was to publicly identify them. Pay attention. Hello? Don't bury your eyes in your Bible. Look up your head. That, uh, the pouring of the oil, that only anointing oil on them was to identify them among men, the whole of the Israelites, as people that God had chosen among them, from among them, to be what? Priests unto him. Praise the Lord. Let me ask you. Hello, look up. Which one came first? The chosen or the pouring of the oil? Which one came first? Which one came first? The choosing. And what is that choosing? What's that choosing? By God. What is it? Being anointed. So it means God already what? Anointed them. Pay attention to this point. God already what? Anointed them. So the pouring of the oil which Moses did was what? A what? A what? A confirmation, a, an outward confirmation of spiritual what reality. Did you get that point? If God had not chosen them, will Moses pour oil? You remember that God told Samuel, "Go to the house of Jesse. You are not a king for me among his sons." Now, Samuel wanted to pour the oil on Eliab, the first son of, of Jesse. What did God tell him? No. Why? The reason why he must not pour the oil is because what? He had not been anointed by God. Did you get the point? He had not been anointed by God. If he had been anointed by God, then the, the oil will fit him. Did you get it now? So, and that's how he tested seven sons of Jesse, and none of them was fit for it. And God said, no, not this one. Until David came. Until who came? Now, if you go to Psalm 89. Psalm 89. Then you understand what happened to David. Psalm 89, verse 20. Or let's say from verse 19. Let's see. Psalm 89 from verse 19. Psalm 89 from verse 19. I'll read to verse 20. All, okay, I can stop at verse 21. Are you there? Psalm of David, chapter 89. It was not David who wrote this. It was written by Ezra Hyatt. Psalm 89 from verse 19 to 21. He says, of old you spoke in a vision to your godly one. Now, the godly one here, if you look at it very well, must be Samuel. Must be who? Samuel. The godly one he is talking about here is Samuel, the prophet. He says, and said, I have granted help to one who is mighty. I have exalted one, chosen, take note of that word, take note of that word, chosen from the people. Verse 20, when Samuel began to ask, who is the person? Now verse 20, I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil, with my what? He didn't say with my olive oil, with my body's oil. With my what? Holy, sacred, special. With my holy oil, I have what? 
I have anointed him. Verse 21. So that my hand shall be established with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. Now, pay attention. Now, let's look up here. I want you to learn how to read Bible and understand Bible. Because the Holy Spirit is in you. Now, listen. He said the Lord spoke these words that we just read now. He spoke to his godly one. His godly one, I said, refers to who? Prophet Samuel. Because it was Prophet Samuel who anointed David. Don't forget that. Do you understand? Hello? Now, but God spoke these words to Samuel. To Samuel. Take note. He spoke these words to Samuel in a vision. He said, with my only oil, I have anointed him. Now, the question is, had Samuel anointed him at that time? At the, the mosaic only anointing, as he touched him? But God said, with my holy oil, I have what? Did he say, with my holy oil, I will anoint him? It's not a future thing. Which means, in the spirit, in the mind of God, David was already what? Anointed. So, what Samuel was going to do was just to what? Confirm. Do you get it now? So, anybody can pour oil on anybody. It doesn't mean God is involved. That's my point. A prophet can carry that horn, big horn, no? the one of antelope, or the one of elephant, and pour on your head. That doesn't mean anything. The question is, are you anointed by God? You might be anointed by a prophet, a man of God. That doesn't mean anything. Praise the Lord. That oil, that physical oil, that liquid golden thing, whatever, it means nothing. So when God said, touch not my anointed, he's not talking about oil being poured on you. So stop rushing here and there and looking for somebody to pour oil on you. Because nobody pour, pour oil on Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And yet God said, touch not my anointed. He was referring to them. He was not referring to pastor or prophet or apostle. He was not referring to men of God as we know it today. When he made that statement in context. Hello? So when somebody is quoting, touch not my anointed. She will put that person in check. Is he really anointed? Amen. Glory to God. So a person must have been chosen. You see, he used the word chosen. He said, I have chosen. Huh? I've exalted one chosen from the people. So the one that God has chosen huh, is the one that he has what? Anointed. Did you get it now? The one that God has chosen is the one that he has what? So God, there was no oil involved in the anointing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There was no oil involved in the anointing of uh, Cyrus. Neither was there any oil involved in the anointing of Jesus or any of the apostles. And nowhere will you read in the Bible that people were ordained into offices in the church, in the early church, in the old book of Acts of the Apostles, by pouring oil on anybody. Check your Bible. There's nothing like that. The only thing that was done in ordination, when people are ordained into office or put into office, was the laying on of hands. Hands were laid on them. Amen. Amen. No oil involved. Praise the Lord. Now, why is it that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Genesis, no oil? Then we come to the New Testament, no oil. Why is it that there is now oil between Exodus and Malachi? I told you, that is what? The law. The dispensation of what? The law. Now, the men under the law, they were sense knowledge people. They did not have the spirit. So they could not, they were, they, they did not have the spirit of faith like Abraham. Hello? They were sense knowledge people who needed to see, to hear, to touch. Huh? Evidence. Like Thomas said, I will not believe except I touch the hole in his hand. Are you getting it? So they were sense knowledge people. And uh, for you, for Moses to say, God has chosen this person, you know, Israelites will not believe. 
So God needed to help them in a way to begin to learn how to uh, respect holy things, sacred things. To know that this is sacred, it's not common. This is holy. He wanted to start teaching them holiness, consecration, sanctification. He began to, so he told Moses to compound that oil for a sign. For a what? For a what? So for a sign. So that oil was for a sign. It's a sign to the unbelieving Jews. A sign to them. Praise the Lord. It was what? A sign to them that, okay, anyone you see this special oil on him is the what? Anointed of the Lord. That's what. That's it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And if you study your Bible, did you know something? Do you know one funny thing? Only two kings were anointed with oil in the land of Israel, according to Bible record. Only two kings. And those two kings, when the oil was poured on them, the only anointing oil, which Moses compounded, to confirm that God really approved of their anointing, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came upon them. When Saul was anointed, the Spirit of God came upon him. When David also was anointed eh, in the house of his father, the Bible says, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. I say what? Confirmation. Are you following? So, which means the oil, physical oil, was not even enough to identify someone as God's chosen one. The spirit must also what? Testify. The spirit must also what? Testify. Amen. Glory to God. The spirit must testify. So Saul and David were the only ones we were kings, kings that were anointed and we heard that the spirit of God came on them. From David to the rest of them, we did not hear anything like that. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So, I, I hope you are getting it. So, the purpose of the oil, let's look at some verses of the Bible and so that we understand the purpose of, the, of that oil. Let's go to Exodus. We are going to read some verses in the book of Exodus. Why, why was that oil poured on them? Exodus chapter, um, um, let's see, chapter 30. Let's, let's, let's just select some verses and read. Chapter 30, I read verse 30. Verse 30. Verse 30. Verse 30. Exodus 30, verse 30 says, You shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them. You do what? Consecrate them. That they may serve me as priests. He repeating it again. God said, You shall pour the oil. That only oil, you pour it on Aaron and his sons. So you are anointing them or appointing them into the office of what? Priests unto me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the anointing is by God uh, to appoint someone into a specific office. Did you get it now? Amen. And um, we look at chapter um, 40, Exodus 40, Exodus 40. Exodus chapter 40. Verse 9. Verse 9 says, Then you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it, and consecrate it and all its furniture, so that it may become holy. So you see that um, God was trying, to, was teaching or training the children of Israel to recognize certain things and certain people as what? Sacred, holy. Men that are sanctified or consecrated. Consecrated means to set something apart unto God. Do you get it now? Hello? Are you with me? Are you with me? Look at verse 10. You shall also anoint the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils and consecrate the altar. Consecrate, you see that word you keep coming up. Consecrate means to sanctify, to set as, as apart from God. He said, 
so that the altar may become most holy. Now go to verse 11. You shall also anoint the basin and his stand and consecrate it. You see? You anoint it without oil and consecrate it. Look at verse 13. Uh, let's read verse 12 to 13. Then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting, and you shall wash them with water and put on Aaron the only garments, and you shall anoint him and consecrate him that he may serve me as what? Priest. He may serve me as what? Priest. He may serve me as priest. So God is the one who gives that instruction. We gave that instruction to Moses. Under the law. Are you following? That was under what? The law. To consecrate. To set that person apart. Huh? To set the person apart. So that people will venerate the person. I know people who go to Orthodox Church, they, that word is not strange to them. Like venerable. So, so, so. You understand? Uh -huh. You venerate the person. Amen. So that you respect and honor the person as God chosen, God servant. Hallelujah. Amen. How we are following? Amen. So this is very important. Let's look at the book of um, Judges. I want to show you some funny thing. Judges chapter 9 verse 8. Judges chapter 9 verse 8. Judges 9 Verse 8. You know Judges after immediately after the book of Joshua. You see Judges. Amen. Chapter 9. I want you to see something in verse 8. Judges chapter 9, verse 8. He says, The trees once went out to anoint a king over them. Did you see that? The tree, it is a parable anyway. It's a parable. You know, trees don't do that. It's a parable. Now he says that the trees, amen went to anoint a king over them. A king. So, so we anoint, don't worry, so we anoint king with oil. Amen. We anoint what? Kings with oil. So if you have been following us, hello, you see that priests were anointed. Is that not so? Priests. And then king, like David, like Saul. Did you see? Priests, kings, so let's see the third kind of people that are anointed with oil under the law. Look at the book of 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. I read verses 15 to 16. 1 Kings chapter 19. Verses 15 to 16. 1 Kings. After the book of 2 Samuel, you see 1 Kings. Chapter 19, verse 15 to 16. He says, And the Lord said to him, that is to Elijah, he was speaking to prophet Elijah, he said, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you, when you arrive, you shall anoint Azael to be king over Syria. So, king, you anoint this person as a king. Is that not so? Verse 16. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Meholah, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. Now, did you notice something? That in all this anointing, 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 who gives the instruction? Who gives the instruction? So in other words, whoever was doing it was doing it on behalf of who? God. So, in other words, who actually, who actually anoints? It's God. It's not man. Anointing is of the Lord. Not of any man. Not of any apostle, prophet, bishop, or pastor. It's only of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. How, I hope you are getting it. I hope you are getting it. So, he says, they should anoint this person as king, and this one as what? Prophet. But we remember that in um, Exodus, we saw priests. So, only three office, or let me say, only three officials were anointed with that oil under the law. Priests, kings, and what? And prophets. Did you hear that? Kings, priests, and what? 
prophets. And you know the you know the beautiful thing? Jesus Christ, our Lord, he was a king. You remember? He was a priest. And of course, you know, he was a prophet. Hallelujah. Amen. So the three offices met inside him. That's why the Bible said the, the fullness of the Godhead dwelt in him. So he's our prophet. He's our priest. Amen. Amen. He's our king. Glory to God. He's the king of kings. He's our high priest. Better than Aaron. Amen. Amen. A priest forever. In the order of Melchizedek. Hallelujah. Amen. And he is our what? Our, which was the third one? Our prophet. He gave prophecy. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. His prophecies never failed. He said, put down this temple after three days, I will raise it up again. Did he not raise it up again? All the words he spoke in Matthew 24, are they not coming to pass? They are coming to pass. His words are true. They are yes and amen. So all meets in him. Did you get it now? Hello? Hello? So we see what it means to be anointed. So when God calls somebody anointed, or when the Bible says this person is anointed, it's not the way we bastardize it today. We just say that person is anointed. Ah, that man he carry anointed. No. Bible vocabulary is different from religion vocabulary. And we must respect it. Amen. Praise the Lord. I hope you are following. Now, in Jesus Christ our Lord, we see the true anointing. Amen. Amen. Did you remember that Peter said, look at Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 10. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Acts 10, 38. Peter said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with bodies oil, with olive oil, with, uh, with oil from the horn or the bottle. With what? With what? Oh, read it out. This is your Bible. You have Bible with you. Eh? With what? With the Holy Spirit. And with what? Power. So God does not anoint people with oil. So under the law, people were anointed with what? Oil. And was it everybody that was anointed? Did they anoint all Israelites? No. Only those who were chosen by God. Amen. They were the anointed ones. And they were anointed to serve God as what? Priest, prophet, or king. They were servants of God. Amen. Are you following this? Amen. So they were consecrated sanctified, allowed into service, appointed into service. And the oil, physical oil, was to help sense-knowledge men, the sense-knowledge Jews, they were not believers, they did not have faith. So, it was to help them. In God's mind, David was already what? Anointed. It is what? Only, he said, with my only oil, I have anointed him. Even before Samuel Paul oil on him in his father's house. Praise the Lord. Are you following? Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So the true oil is the spirit. Is what? Is the what? The spirit. Now, when was Jesus anointed with the Holy Spirit? When? When, don't forget, I told you when I was teaching you about baptism, water baptism. You will remember, I told you that Jesus came to John the Baptist at, at Jordan River. Uh, and uh, John, John himself said, I didn't recognize the Messiah. But he who sent me to baptize with water told me that he upon whom you see the Spirit descend uh, and remains 
Huh? He is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, in the water of Jordan, after John baptized him, and of course you know why he had to submit to baptism. Was it anything? No. Immediately baptized him, the Bible says, John said, I saw the Spirit. I saw what? Descending from where? Heaven. And resting upon him. Now, the oil of God is the Spirit of God. The oil of God is what? The oil of God is what? The oil of God is what? The oil of God is the Spirit of God. Now, when you go to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 4, verse, verse 18, this is the, these are the words of Jesus. These are the words of Jesus. You know, Isaiah the prophet spoke in prophecy in Isaiah chapter 61. And that prophecy that he gave in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to verse 3, is what Jesus fulfilled here. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 says, it says, or we can read from verse 17. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach, to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Verse 20. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed upon him. Verse 21. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture, that is, this prophecy, has been fulfilled in your hearing. Praise the Lord. Now, I want us to take note of that statement which he made in verse 18. The spirit, pay attention here. The spirit of the Lord is upon because he has what? So, can we pray? Hello? Can we do uh, synonymous test? Whether you understand synonyms. So, can we change the word anointed now? What will you ch change it to? He has what? He has chosen me. So the spirit is upon him because he was chosen. So the spirit is the sign. The sign, the proof, the confirmation, the evidence that this person is chosen by God. Amen. Amen. For a purpose. Are you listening? Now, but you know something? What about us in Christ? Don't forget, you also have been baptized into Christ. I taught you that. You have been what? Baptized into Christ. If Christ is the head of the church, and the church is the body of Christ, and you are part of the body, and if I say you have been united with him, one spirit, so if Christ is the anointed one, and that's meaning of Christ. Christ means anointed. The anointed one. That is, is the true anointed one. Hello? The Messiah. The Hebrew people call it the Mashiach. Amen. Al Mashiach. So he is the Al Mashiach, the one who carries the oil of God. So he is the one who carries the spirit of God. And that's why God said to John the Baptist, He is the Holy One. Who baptizes the Holy Spirit because He has it. Amen. Amen. Did you get it now? Hello. Amen. But in Him, you also have been anointed. <sighs> what belongs to Him belongs to you. So the anointing you carry is not Pastor Joseph's anointing, it's not Apostle Moses or Prophet. Uh, Johnson's anointing. It's not bishop or archbishop, so, 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 so anointing. The anointing that you carry as a believer is whose anointing? Jesus' anointing. And there's no higher one. But 
fact, there are people who you don't know the truth. You are pursuing anointing. You want a professor so so to anoint you, a professor so so to anoint you, this one to anoint you, and then you carry money, you put an envelope. Man of God, I need your anointing. Man of God, I need your anointing. Stop being foolish. Stop being what? And carnal. In Christ, you have been anointed. Because in him, don't forget, look at First Peter. Go back to First Peter chapter 2. Don't forget who you are in him. Amen. Don't forget who you are in Christ. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Talking to believers. He says, you are a what? You are what? So in other words, change the word chosen to anointed. So you are the anointed race. You are. Isn't that you will be? Stop looking for it. You are anointed. Amen. Amen. You don't need to be a pastor. You don't need to be a prophet. You don't need to be an apostle or bishop. You don't need to go to a Bible seminary or a theological seminary before you can be called an anointed. Hello. Those who believe as Abraham believed God, the moment you believe, you are given the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit in you is the proof that God has chosen you in him. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. He said you are a chosen what? Race. A royal what? Now, the word royal. What's another word for? It does not connote what? King. King. Is that not so? So priest. He said a chosen. He now said royal priesthood. That means king priests. King priests. So we carry the. So I told you, who are those who are anointed? It's not the, these three kings, prophets, and what? Priests. Now the Bible tells us you are a chosen, you are an anointed race. A royal priesthood. A holy what? A holy nation. A people for his own what? Possession. That you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous. Verse 10. Once. You were not a people. That is before. You were not a people. God did not even recognize you. He said, but now, you are God's what? Oh, I'll be God's personal person. No. I say, I'll be God's personal person. He says, once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Hallelujah. Yeah. I have received mercy. I say, I have received mercy. I, received I am God's person. I say I am God's person. I say I am God's person. Hallelujah. I'm, oh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Stop looking for this thing called anointing oil here and there. Amen. Amen. Don't be like the children of Israel, unbelieving and hard, hard hearted people who needed something called olive oil. Eh? Or holy oil to be poured on certain people among them before they recognize them as anointed people. You know why the Jews did not accept Jesus? Because they didn't see any proper oil on him. But they did not know that God himself had anointed him with the true oil, the Holy Spirit, and with power. Hallelujah. Amen. You carry the anointed. I say you carry the anointed. Look at the book of um, Second Timothy. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians, rather, I want to say. 2 Corinthians, quickly. 2 Corinthians, chapter 1. 2 Corinthians, chapter 1. 2 Corinthians, chapter 1. I read from verse 21 to verse 22. Verses 21 to 22. Paul, the apostle, speaking about believers, he says, are you there? 2 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 21 to 22. Paul says, and it is God. You see it again? It is who? God. It is God who establishes us with you in Christ. And as what? Hey. And as what? Did he say he will anoint us? Is it a future thing? It's a done thing. In who? In Christ. In Christ. Hallelujah. In union with him, we have been anointed. He had established us. Hallelujah. That means he chose us. That established them is to choose, to appoint. 
So he's the one who chose, who appointed us together with you. Paul is saying, see, the way he appointed we apostles, eh? he appointed you to Corinthians. Say, and the proof of it is that he anointed us with what? With the Spirit. Now he said, and has anointed us. Verse 22. And has also put his seal on, uh, on us. He put his what? Seal on us and giving us what? His Spirit in our hearts as what? A guarantee. Hallelujah. Amen. So when Aaron, when the oil was poured on Aaron, when the oil was poured on David, it became a guarantee, a sign that God chose them. Now when the oil is on you, you say, yeah, oh, the oil is on me. God has chosen me. Now, in the same way, the Bible says in Christ, you have the anointing. That means you have the Holy Spirit. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit. When were you sealed with the Holy Spirit? When you believed the gospel. When you believed the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. See, it's not a feeling. It's a knowing. It's not a feeling. It's a what? It's a knowing. Not a feeling. This is a faith thing. Faith is not a feeling. It's a knowing. The moment you know this truth, not just know it in your head, you meditate on it until it, be, it becomes your consciousness. You see that the anointing begins to work. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at First John. First John. First John, chapter two. As I round up this morning, First John chapter two. First John chapter two. First John chapter two. First John chapter two. Are you there? First John chapter two. Now look at what he says in uh, verse um, verse twenty. Verse twenty. We are looking at verse twenty. First John, yeah, verse twenty and verse twenty seven. Verse 20, then we'll go to verse 27. Now let's read verse 20. He says, Now this is John the Apostle speaking to believers, people he called his children in the faith. He says in verse 20, But you have been what? Did he say you will be anointed when you fast, when you pray, when you give all your money to God, when you promise God you will not sin again? Hello? He said, but you have been, you have been, you have been, by what? Who is the Holy One? God. So, did he say you have been anointed by Peter? By Paul? Or by myself? The apostles did not anoint anybody with oil. They never. Neither Paul nor Peter, nor any of the apostles were ever anointed anybody with oil. They understood that God, the Holy One, was the only person who anoints people. And under the law was the only time he approved anointing people with a physical oil as a sign. But now, the dispensation of the law ended when Christ said it is finished, when he breathed his last on the cross. The dispensation of the law ended. So, the law was set aside. Amen. It was no more in force. It was abolished. Fulfilled and abolished. You get it? So, on the, so those who still carry oil, what are they still practicing? The law. The Old Testament. In the New Testament, we don't do that. You are a believer in Christ, you are anointed. Amen. He said, you have, you have the anointing. Look at it. He said, but you have been anointed by the Holy One. And you all have what? Knowledge. You all have that knowledge. That is this knowledge of the Father. You know the Father. Glory to God. Now look at verse 27. Let's start from verse 26. He says, I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. But... The anointing that you received. Hey, is this in past tense? 
This is a past tense. Uh, the anointing of the believer is never in future. It's never something you get after you pray, you fast. You go to a mountain, prayer camp, and do seven days fasting, 40 days fasting, then God will anoint you. Then I come and say, I carry the anointing. I carry the anointing. No. Li listen. He says, but the anointing that you received from him, that is from the Father, abides in you. And you have no need that anyone should teach you, that is, teach you about the Father. But as his, his, his anointing teaches you, let me ask you, does oil teach? Does oil teach? Oh, yeah. But this oil, it teach you. It is the Spirit that teaches. You know, so when the Spirit is coming, we teach you all things. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. He said the anointing, but his anointing, his anointing. How can God's anointing be, be oil? God, a spirit. Oil, no. That's a real spirit. Hallelujah. He said, but, his, but as his anointing teaches you about everything, and it's true, and it's no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. Hallelujah. Amen. Maybe I should change it. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So, we have the anointing in Christ. I have the anointing in Christ. And if you, are, if you are a believer like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if you are a believer like Peter, James, John, and Paul, hello. If you are a believer like the Corinthians, if you are a believer like these people that John wrote, wrote to, then you also have that anointing. Yes. It's not only Pastor Joseph who has the anointing. Hello. So when you hear touch not my anointing, is he talking about Pastor Joseph? Hello? He's talking about only the leaders in the church? He's talking about you and me. Believers in Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And we are all, listen, those under the law, the priests, the kings, and uh, the prophets, they were anointed in, and appointed into what? Offices to serve God. In the same way, you and I have been anointed into the office of preaching the gospel. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And you will be witnesses to me. You will be my witnesses. Hello. Hello. So we are anointed not just to come and sit down in church and speak in tongues. No. We are anointed to go and share the gospel. And preach the gospel to our neighbors, to our, our colleagues at work. Our neighbors, our friends, our family, tell them about Jesus. That's what we are anointed for. God has no business with oil. When we want to put people in ecclesiastical offices in the church, we want to put people in office in church, what do we do? We lay hands on them. Let me show you one or two before I run up. Amen. Let's go to the book of Acts of the Apostles to see that, how it was done. I'll show you an example. In the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6. I read from uh, verse um, 5. You know, this was a time when there was crisis in the church uh, about food distribution. Food what? Food what? Food distribution or distribution of food, like when we are doing communion service. Eh? Want to distribute food. You know, some people, when they are distributing the food, they are hiding, they are somebody, you know, greet me yesterday, I know we'll give you. So, they are, so people were hungry. And uh, they, are, they came to report to the apostle that, oh, some people are, are being, you know, neglected. So what did Peter say? Peter and I said, okay, we cannot come and be doing that. Choose people among yourself, verse 5. And what they said pleased the whole, the whole gathering. And they chose, pay, pay attention, they did what? They chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and of the Holy Spirit. You see that? With me, you already carried the anointing. Is that not so? And Philip, and, Pro and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicolaus, a proselyte of Antioch, verse 6. And they set them, and they, and they set, and, sorry, these they set before the apostles, and they prayed, 
and pour oil on them. And they prayed and anointed them with oil. What is that? They prayed and did what? And laid what? And did what? They did what? They laid hands on them. They didn't pour oil on them to ordain them into the office of deacons. These were deacons. So de listen, pay attention here. Even in the early church, deacons were helpers of the church in distributing food. They were helpers of the church in distributing food. They were like what we are, what we call ushers today. So an usher is a deacon. People were supposed to clean the chairs and, all, and we appoint them. We say, come and clean the chair, arrange it. You are deacons. It's not until they come and carry oil and put oil and call you deacons. You are deacons. You are helpers of the church. You get it now. Do you get it now? Did they have, did they have, <laughs> were they choosing to come and preach? They, they told them to come and do good food. But, of course, that's in the church. They were to do this. But outside there, they preached the gospel. Like Stephen went and preached and worked miracles and signs and wonders. One of them is Philip. He also went to uh, uh, Samaria and preached and worked miracles. Praise the Lord. So we, we have many other instances I could have shown you in the Bible here where hands were laid on people and uh, in ordaining people to church. Amen. I mean, into positions of leadership. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So this is very important. Let, let, let me show you one more. One more. Look at verse, chapter 13, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13. I read verse 3. Okay, we start from verse 2. Verse 2. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, from verse 2. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me, for me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. That is, this is the work I have appointed them. Now, verse 3. Then, after fasting and praying, they pour oil on them and send them off. Is that what is there? What did they do? They did what? They laid hands on them and sent them off. Hallelujah. Did you see that? Did you see that? Was there any pouring of oil? No. If you go to, let's go to the epistles. One more scripture. Let me just give you one more scripture, then we close. Amen. Ah, glory to God. Amen. Oh, glory to God. We have so many scriptures that I can show you. Um, uh -huh. Okay. Oh, okay, let's see Timothy. Let me give us Timothy. Mm -hmm. um, shall I look at Timothy or we look at Second Timothy? See that we see. Yeah. When the elders lay their hands on you, glory to God. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just one more scripture. Okay. Okay. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Okay, that's First Timothy chapter four, verse fourteen. First Timothy chapter four, verse fourteen. Now, Timothy was a bishop, a pastor of the church in Ephesus. Now, look at First Timothy four fourteen. He says, "Do not neglect the gift you have, which was given you by prophecy, when the council of elders poured." They are oils on you. And when the council of elders did what? When they laid their hands on you. Amen. When they laid their hands on you. Praise the Lord. So when they laid hands on you. Now if you go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Look at verse 6. Verse 6 to verse 7. Verse 6 to 7. Paul the apostle says, for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my what? Hands. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and of and love and of what? Self-control. Praise the Lord. 
So you see, the ordination into offices, whether office of a bishop or a pastor, was done by what? Laying hands. No oil involved. Is that clear now? Is that clear now? Is there oil involved? No. Don't worry. We will teach on the use of oil. Uh, the statement of, I've taught us before, but for the sake of those who are just joining us, next Sunday we'll look into that. Amen. We'll look into the issue of anointing oil. You know, the statement of James in, uh, in James chapter 5, verse uh, 13, 14, where he said, if any is sick, he said, let, them, let him call for the elders and let them anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. So we'll know what that means. How do we interpret that correctly? Amen. That will be next week by the grace of God. I hope you'll be here next week. Let's be on our feet. I want you to say this with me. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Because I believe in Christ. I have the spirit of God. I have the anointing of God. It's in me. I carry his anointing. I am blessed. Chosen. Consecrated. I am chosen. In Christ. I am chosen. I am chosen. I am chosen. I am not rejected. You know, there were there was um, Isaac and Ishmael. But Isaac was the chosen one. Is that not so? There was Esau and Jacob. Jacob was the chosen one. Were they chosen because of any good thing they did? No. In the same way, you are not chosen because of any good thing you did. It's by grace. Hallelujah. I want you to say it again. I am chosen. I am chosen. Anointed. Anointed. With the Holy Spirit. Not with olive oil. Not with olive oil. That dries off. And can be washed off. But I've been anointed by God. In Christ Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, and this oil of the Spirit that I carry, the anointing of the Spirit is permanent, ever fresh, ever fresh, ever fresh. I carry an anointing, I carry an anointing, not because I'm a pastor, not because I'm a bishop. Not because I'm a prophet, but because I'm a believer. I'm a child of God. In Christ Jesus, I am anointed. I am anointed. I am anointed. I am anointed. Miracles, signs and wonders, they follow me. Therefore, because I'm anointed, no devil, no demon, no evil is permitted to touch me. He said, touch not my anointed ones. And do my prophets no harm. That's me. They dare not touch me. There is an order. An order. An order. From above. To all demons. To all demons. To every evil spirit. Concerning me. They must not touch me. I carry his anointing. I am his anointed one. No devil dare touch me. No demon dare touches me. I am blessed. Oh, lift up your hand and worship the Lord. Worship the Lord and God. Celebrate the grace of 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 God.